2013 F-150 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Got to change out the spark plugs and those boots for that TSB technical service bulletin that Ford put out. Engine is shuddering, puttering. Actually went into limp mode. So let's get this done. You can do this. Easy. Ford wants over $400 to do this. Uh-uh. We're going to do it for, what, 80 bucks in parts, if that, depending on where you buy them. Let's do this. All right, what tools are you going to need? Just some basic hand tools for the most part. 8 millimeter socket. I do have a baby ratchet to go along with that. 5 8 inch uh, spark plug socket. has that little rubber gasket on the inside there, or rubber piece on the inside to help hold the spark plugs in and out. Universal joint. 6 inch extension works perfect. This is a 3 8 inch drive is what I got, so I have a, a ratchet to go along with that. Flathead screwdriver comes in handy. Uh, you'll need something like that or a pry tool. Some type of gap gauge, yeah, that's kind of a cheapie, but it works. Torque wrench. Now, this is a foot-pound torque wrench, so I, I did 11 foot-pounds. Um, if you have an inch-pound tor torque wrench, that's going to be 133 inch-pounds. Uh, light is optional. And, of course, coffee in an Iraq Veteran 88-88 mug. Also optional, but recommended. <laughs> All right, first thing we need to pop off this little engine cover here. Pull that oil cap off. This sucker just pops up. All right, a couple more things to get out of the way on the driver's side here. Uh, real quick, right here, you can see we have the um, PCV line. It's going to be over one of our coil banks, one of our plugs. So. There is a little release latch on the side, so push that over, pull it up, and it just pops right off there. You can swing it out of the way. And this guy, we got a cover here, pull off. And uh, yeah, it's just like a rubbery type cover. And this looks like, go ahead and disconnect this line to this high pressure pump here. There is, Ford is nice enough to put the little release button on the bottom where you can't really get to it. So you have to push that in and pull the connector off. Ugh. Tuck that out of the way for now. All right, now that everything's out of the way, any other harnesses or lines, just going to push them out of the way as needed. Uh, your configuration may be slightly different depending on the year model. But right here, first thing, you got to disconnect the connector from the coil pack. I'm going to try to get you a, a good look of the struggle to remove one of these clips, maybe give you some tips. So, first thing, we got to get this lock tab pulled down carefully you don't want to break it now we have to push in on this gray piece here to un to release the the lock on the connector but you want to push up on the connector first you might have to use a tool for, or something push down to release the connector then pull it out some of them are a little bit harder than others, uh, but that's the general premise right there. All right, get the connector out of the way. This line, pull it back out of the way. Eight millimeter bolt here for each one holds them in. them all and take them out by hand. Push the harness out of the way and we're going to lift up on this. These may 
be in there pretty good, so you may have to pry up on them carefully with some type of pry tool. But well, that one came out pretty easy. These shouldn't be in there too awful tight. Now the gap on it was about 38 thousandths, so it was less than I thought it'd be. New part, Ford recommends, SP-534, and this is the Motocraft stuff. And then here's the new boot, uh, WR-6135. The new gap on your plugs, uh, Ford has taken them down to uh, 28 thousandths. But they give you a range like 28 thousandths to I think it's 36 uh, thousandths or something like that. We'll see how these are gapped first. Got mine gapped out to 30 thousandths. That's what I'm going to go with. It was pretty close to that. I'm going to go with 30 on all of them. Uh, you can go all the way down to 28 thousandths, and some people recommend that uh, if you're getting into some tunes and stuff, definitely. So I'm going to put a little bit of anti seize on here. We're going to change these boots out too. The boots, you just kind of twist them. Pop them off, twist, pop. Whoa. All right, easy peasy. Just a little bit of the and he sees on the threads here doesn't take a whole lot and that grease down a little bit of our dielectric grease that let's go install one thing I recommend is threading these all the way down by hand not using your ratchet alright torque <laughs> you can either do this hand tight it and just a little bit more but if you want to go by the, the specs the torque is 133 inch pounds if you have a foot pound torque wrench just set it to 11 you don't want to over tighten these plugs because this is not a lot of torque on them over tighten them and they'll you know you'll crack them <laughs> all right got the new boot on a little dielectric grease on the bottom let's go ahead and install it move those lines out of the way as needed again Oh yeah, I can tell it definitely seated down better. Pull it down, get your little bolt started. And just hand tighten those with a little baby ratchet. Tighten it so just snug it. All right, plug in your connector. You hear it snap into place. You want to make sure you also lock it into place with that red tab. So push that red tab all the way up. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, got them all back in. Just got to hook up all the connectors again. Here it click, push the lock in place.
lock. Don't forget about this guy. And PCV valve line. It's a hard line. I went ahead and disconnected it from down here as well just to get it out of the way. Just snaps back into place. Put the cover on. Alright, put this little noise cover, insulation cover back on. Goes on this way. It just kind of sits in there. It does have a cut out in the back for your that electrical line. All right, let's get that engine cover back on. Pull that oil cover again, oil fuel cover. And we're gonna slide it down in there and get these two pieces here to pop into place first. And kind of look under the cover and get the alignment on them, pop them into place. Your oil fill line is gonna pop through that gasket. And there's that little McLevin over here. Pop that down onto it. Put your oil fill cap back on. Let's test it out. All right, here we go. Let's see how we did here. All right, test drive time. I can already tell you sitting at the stoplight back there. This is the smoothest this truck has idled in a long time. I guess you just kind of get accustomed to kind of a, a bad idle, like a little bit of a rough idle. Um, but man, it was so smooth. I was like, is the truck still on? <laughs> ah, I was gonna on-ramp here with some vigor, but got some cars in the way. jump on the highway this is where this thing would go into lint mode with the misfiring and stuff you know trying to pass somebody not even being real aggressive with it so we'll give it a whirl here and of course we got winds coming at me big time Here we are just sitting here at idle. Smooth. Man, it's just smooth. This is definitely... If you have one of these EcoBoost engines and you start getting some uh, wampity-pampity misfires and crap like that, rough idling, might be time for the plugs to be changed. Jump back on the highway here. Yeah. Boom! 